Oh, hello. Am I through to Jehovah's Witnesses? This is the number on the JW.org site for Windsor. Yes, of course. Yeah. Oh, ha hello there. Hi. Um, um, I can leave my number with you if it's not convenient to speak now. No, my, not at all. That's fine. Um, my name is Robert Skinner. I've been reading one of your books during the lockdown. What can the Bible teach us? Oh, yes. Um, I'm a bit puzzled about the resurrection because when I used to go to church, um, we were taught that Jesus rose in the same body that he died in, but your your book says he rose as a spirit creature. So I was a bit puzzled about that. Um, but the, the other thing was on page 33 of the book, paragraph 11, it says that all governments belong to Satan. And I was, well, I was a bit shocked. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that is a bit of a surprise, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I live in this country, um, the UK, and um, I don't think the Bible commands me to have a sort of view of the monarch and the crown that um, it somehow belongs to Satan or is evil. Um, you can't disassociate the crown from the British state or the British government because it's the head of the British state. Um, yes, indeed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just kind of a bit shocked. Um, perhaps you might be able to help. Thank you. Thank you very much. No, of course, you're very welcome. Very nice to talk to you, Robert. Thanks, thanks for your call. Thank you. Um, where did you, sorry, did you just go online or did you, where did you get the book? Um, I got it from one of the carts from, from, oh, yes, before, yeah. the, from before the lockdown. Um, yeah. I do have quite, I mean, I've got a library of about a thousand religious books, um, all sorts of things. I, I do have some older Jehovah's Witness literature as well, not just that book. I've got a copy of Religion from 1940 by Judge Rutherford. Wow, that is coming back again. Yeah, um, I got that from a book book dealer. And um, on page 72, it talks, it, it discusses, and then there's a picture of a demon armies gathering to Armageddon. And it's, it shows all these demon armies. You can see the Pope with his triple tiara, bishops, and there's three unclean spirits like frogs leading them. And then when you look at the armies, apart from people like bankers and um, um, religious people, you can see the Union Jack flag and the American flag of, of these demon armies gathering to fight Jesus. And I'm kind of, well, a bit shocked. <laughs> no, I think probably it's, I'm trying to think about the best way to start with, with this. Obviously, the book runs in um, a sequential format. Uh, one of the basic um, I mm. ideas that we work with is to allow scripture to explain scripture. So. Uh, the approach that we take to Bible study is that you can't simply take one piece and, you know, base everything. It, it all has to fit together. So the, the aspect that you're referring to yeah. uh, with the question, who rules the world, is uh, it's a very, very important question. Um, I've just, in fact, I've just opened it up here in front of me. Yeah, bear with me a second, just catching my breath. I've literally yes. just walked in the yes, door, sure. I've just walked into town and back. Sure, sure. <laughs> it's really busy in there today. Um, so let me just catch up here. So your question basically is that that seems at odds with, well, I suppose with a general worldview. Well, that... Sorry, I interrupted you, I'm sorry. No, not at all. Um, Basically, um, is the book saying that every single person in every single government is of the devil? Is that what the, the book well, is saying? Basically, it, it's saying that according to First John 5.19, the, the whole world is lying in the power of the wicked one. This is basically, at this time in human history, this is a world which is fundamentally controlled by the devil, which is one of the reasons why uh, God himself has set up uh, a kingdom with Jesus as its head to overthrow uh, those governments. I mean, uh, this was written 2,000 years ago. It's not written about the year 2020 in Great Britain, is it? When John wrote 1 John 5, 19. It, it no, doesn't have no. any relevance to governments. Um, he's surely writing to individuals. Um, you look at verse 18, we know, first person plural, so he's including himself in that. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin, or practice sin as a habit, but he who has been born of God keeps himself and the wicked one does not touch him. We know that we're of God, and here's the contrast, the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. So it's simple, 
it's simply talking about individuals who've been born of God. They don't practice sin. They love God. And then there's other peoples who aren't born of God. And they lie under the sway of the wicked one. It's got nothing to do with governments because you can't have a government that's born of God. You know, you couldn't say that the British government is born of God or the French government is born of God. Or you couldn't apply that to a multinational company like Sony or Toyota or the Ford Motor Company. You couldn't say the Ford Motor Company has been born of God. It's, it's individuals. Born of God um, would relate to John 3 where it talks about... Uh, it is poorly translated in most Bibles as born again. The footnotes usually read um, born from above. The reason it was translated born again was the Catholic priest would say, look, uh, unless you're, you come to us for, to have your babies baptised, you can't enter into the kingdom of God because baptism is the, the sacrament that gets the baby into the kingdom of God. And the problem with John 3 is if it says, as it does, um, I'm not a Greek scholar, I'm just an ordinary person, but John 3 says, if you're born from above, well, what's that got to do with being dunked in water? So they changed that to born again. And they, they'd say, well, that applies to water baptism administered by the priest. So that's why there's a sort of tradition at John 3 um, of it being translated born again. But it, 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 it's simply being born of God. It's a birth that's given to us, a new birth that's given to us by God. And it, it doesn't apply to government, surely. It doesn't apply to multinational companies. Uh, and John twice uses, we know. We know that whoever is born of God, verse 18, verse 19, we know that we are of God. So he's, he, he's talking to individuals and he's including himself with his readers as being one of those who've been born of God. And the contrast would obviously be people who haven't been born of God. Individuals, no, no reference at all to, to government, surely. Well, so are, so are churches and organisations, so is every single yes, group. Indeed, yes. you know, if you call for the plumber to do the plumbing, he's part of an organisation that's a plumbing company. Um, so, so the, the, plumbing company, the plumbing company's influence on human life, how humans interact with each other, human, even, in fact, human relationships with God, uh, is very, very different to the work of governments. And obviously this is not to suggest, I mean, first of all, it's very, very important to yeah. understand that um, the passage in Romans chapter 13 is uh, of very great importance to us as Jehovah's Witnesses. We believe that governments are allowed to be in position uh, by God so that there is a measure of order in, uh, in the world and society because obviously there will be complete chaos uh, without such an arrangement, and we take very seriously our responsibility to be obedient to those superior authorities. But Jesus also spoke uh, quite a bit about the difference between those who uh, worship God and want a relationship with him, and the world that he talked about as being in the power of the, the wicked one. Um, again, um what does the reference to being in the power of the wicked one apply to? It's, it's applying to individuals, surely. Individuals who don't follow Jehovah or Yahweh God. Um, they would be under the sway of the wicked one. I, I mean, in 1 John 5, 19, I'll just read it. We know that we're of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. I have been at this for hours, by the way. I've been looking at this for many, many hours. Um, would you say, where it says the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one, would you include yourself in that and other Jehovah's Witnesses and the gut people who write the Watchtower, the governing body of the Jehovah's Witnesses? Do you believe that that applies to them and, and also to you? Well, not, not in the same way that you are describing. Otherwise, it would, be, it would be pointless to believe that we have a relationship with Jehovah God. Um, we believe that this is the organization, religiously speaking, that Jehovah God is using at the present time to give a witness to all mankind before the end that Jesus talks about uh, comes. And the, the end of that system would obviously include the governmental system, which is a fundamental part of the condition that humankind finds itself in at the present time. 
So, for example, in Daniel chapter 2, verse 44, that same kingdom that Jesus talked about mm -hmm. in, in prophecy, uh, talking about in the days of uh, those kings, yes. talking about this period of the time of the end, uh, God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be brought to ruin or never be destroyed. Uh, this kingdom will not be passed on to any other people. It will crush and put an end to all these kingdoms, all these, these governments, is another way to translate that. And it alone will stand forever. So we, we believe that it is God's purpose to bring an end to human independent rulership, independent of him, and to hold... As you, uh, the translation you're using, sway over the earth by means of his kingdom government, as a real government, as opposed to a, a, a notion of something that's within the heart of man. Um, well, obviously, I believe that human government is going to cease after the return of Christ and Armageddon. Mm. So, uh, I mean, I mean, uh, that's that's obvious. Um, but the question is now: I'm living in Britain in the year 2020. Is there a verse in the Bible that commands me to believe that the British government and the crown is of the devil? Well, obviously, it can't be that specific. The, the, the Bible doesn't refer to any of the governments in the time of the end by name. Funny enough, as you, we, we've just been going through our um, uh, Watchtower study, our Watchtower mm -hmm. Bible study today. Mm -hmm. A very interesting study because this is a little bit unusual to have it today. This is, um, you know, we have our annual conventions, and uh, ordinarily we would be, we should have been at Wembley this year, but mm -hmm. like everything else, it's subject to the oh, yes. COVID 19 yes. situation. Um, so everything's been reorganized. We've got a, a, a stream, a, a, an internet streamed convention, so our watchtower's been moved around. Yes. Uh, our yes. normal, regular congregation meetings. But the subject we've been talking about. Uh, today is the prophecy in Daniel with regard to the king of the north and the king of the south and if it's possible to identify uh, who those kings refer to because of their impact on human uh, life and particularly God's people in the time mm -hmm. of the end yes yes so I, I think probably I, I can understand what you're saying that it sounds like Jehovah's Witnesses are proclaiming that the, the Queen and the monarchy and the government are, in some respect, themselves evil. No, no, no. Your book says it's the institution that yeah. belongs to Satan. Your book is very clear. It says all governments belong to Satan. Yes, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah, not the individual that. people who are um, you're referring to. You're referring to the institutions of government itself, of which the, the Crown will be the head of the British um, government, of course. Um, yes, of course. Yes. So, of course, th there is a problem with that, and that I believe that although many governments um, do bad things and do act contrary to God, and Christians need to make a stand when they believe governments are doing things that are contrary to God, nevertheless, I do believe there are good Christian people in many of the governments around the world I don't believe that every single person, every single government is of the devil. I mean, you mentioned Daniel. Well, Daniel was a, a member of a government, wasn't he? Yeah, he was appointed true. to a government position and he wasn't of the devil. Um, Romans 16, 23, I only found this um, yesterday, actually. Um, it mentions Erastus, the treasurer of the city greets you. This is a, as you know, the end of Romans is, is Paul greeting various people from Rome or to Rome yes he's, he's writing to Christians in Rome strange he doesn't write to Peter if Peter's the first Pope but um, in Romans 16 23 he writes to Erastus the treasurer of the city so Erastus held a very high government position and yet he's a, a Christian brother um, so just to clarify when it says in 1 John five nineteen, the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one do you believe that's every single person on earth, including every Jehovah's Witness, including you and the governing body, or, or, or not? Well, what we believe is that, the, just as the Bible says, the whole world is lying in the power of the wicked one. Uh, Jesus also.
also did describe his followers as being no part of the world. But what is the what is? So the world in that context mm. is the world outside of the arrangement for pure worship that Jehovah God uh, has set up in the time of the end. Basically, everyone who's not a Jehovah's Witness. In a nutshell, yes, that yeah. would be. Okay. When I've spoken to the Christadelphians and the Mormons and the Way International and a couple of wacky extreme Pentecostal groups, they interpret it in exactly the same way. They say anyone who's not a member of our little group yeah. is of the devil. The whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. That's everyone who's not a member, faithful, obedient, paying a tithe in our religious group. Which is one of the challenges of organised religion. My wife and I often <laughs> talk about this. I, mean, I, I grew up in I wasn't born into a family of Jehovah's Witnesses, as is the case for, for many. Mm. Um, I, I grew up in Dublin, in, in Ireland, where, you know, like 95, 96% of the population is Catholic. Yeah. And the Catholic Church is obviously a great deal bigger than Jehovah's Witnesses as an organization or any Pentecostal group of Christadelphians or whoever it is, you know, there's in, in excess of a billion. And, and you know, when you strip it all down, the belief of any religion, the only point of being in it is if you believe it's got the truth. Um, uh, absolutely not. I think most religious people don't give a hoot about the truth now. They simply go for the social activities and they like to be told things that itch their ears. So no, pastors I, I have to tell them that. and people don't care about the truth. I, I, I gave up on church 10 years ago and the issue that drove me out, there were several issues. There were scandals by disgusting actions by church leaders who are not accountable. When you point that out, um, they simply phone the police. This happened to me and they all, all the pastors stick together. But the second thing was the doctrine of the Trinity. Uh, I am a passionate Trinitarian, passionate, um, because I used to be in the oneness movement in the 1980s. Um, the Jesus Only Movement, Oneness, have you heard of it? The Apostolic Movement? Yes, I've heard of that, yeah. Right, well, I was involved in that. I was baptised in 1988. I was in it for just under a year. Um, I wrote a tract for them against the Trinity and offered a £1,000 if you could prove Trinitarian baptism from the Book of Acts. £1,000, and I gave my address at the back of the tract. Um, and I left. And I, 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 I left. I became a passionate, zealous Trinitarian. Oh, and what drove me out of the churches was the Trinity. Because you go to the average Baptist church, Pentecostal church, um, and these leaders in the churches do not know what they believe and they do not care. And again and again and again from church leaders, I was told that Jesus is God the Father. Um, uh, and similar heretical things. Jesus is God the Father is the basis of the oneness belief or modalism. It's not Trinitarianism. And um, you can't speak to these people. You can't sit down and have a discussion because the pastors hide uh, in the office. And you can't... Well, you... No, from, from your, from your, sorry to interrupt yeah. you, uh, Robert. You're, you say you're a passionate Trinitarian. Yes. So what, what do you feel is the difference between Trinitarianism... Yes. And the beliefs that you've just described. A modalism. Modalism or, or the oneness. That Jesus is, is the Father and, and so on. The belief that Jesus is the Father is traditionally known as modalism or Sabellianism. Today oh. it's known as oneness or the apostolic movement. If you believe that, then you are forced to deny the divinity of the Son of God and believe the Son of God lacks divine attributes which I believe is what is also taught in Unitarianism and the Jehovah's Witnesses, Christadelphians and the Way International. The difference is, oneness Pentecostals will look you straight in the face and they'll say, Jesus is God, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is eternal, Jesus is omnipresent, Jesus is all-powerful, and they really do believe that. But the Jesus they're referring to is not the Son, it's the Father. Because in oneness or modalism, the apostolic movement, Jesus is the Father, Jesus is the Son, Jesus is the Holy Spirit. So, Isn't that the, the, the confusion which is caused by the doctrine of the Trinity no, in itself? No, 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 no. In, in, tr in Trinitarian thought, there's a distinction. There's an eternal distinction between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
um, they are eternal they are consubstantial which means that they all share the same single nature but there is an eternal distinction between the father son and holy spirit um, but i found out that when you spoke to church leaders the number of times um i've come across i mean i've come across the most outrageous heresy um i i did an, the last church i ever attended i did three meetings at a um, plymouth christian center in in plymouth i did i did the alpha course um, and i changed the alpha course um, i think i missed the first meeting and so i think i attended meetings two to four and there were people from god tv on our table god tv is very very big uh, in plymouth they have their their, their center in in plymouth and um, they said that Jesus is the father. The alpha leader confirmed that. I was furious. I then spoke to the head of the alpha course at Plymouth Christian Center. Um, she said, yes, Jesus is God the father. I said, that's not the Trinity. That's modalism. This is a Trinitarian church. You see, all these churches will have creeds that are Trinitarian, but nobody actually bothers to even read it or even care about it. They teach what they like. It would be like you at your Jehovah's Witness cart distributing the Book of Mormon, saying, yeah, we're, we're Jehovah's Witnesses, we're not Mormons, but you distribute the Book of Mormon at your carts. No, well, I think that my, um, the whole business of the, the uh, teaching of the Trinity and which I have form yeah. it is was of great interest to my dad. It was one of the first things that uh, caught his attention. Yes. Uh, yeah. could, could, I, could I just go on? Um, on this table, this alpha table, um, I then wrote twice to the pastor of Plymouth Christian Centre, Reverend Lee, complaining. He never wrote back. Then I wrote to John Glass, who's the general superintendent, that's like the head of the governing body of the Elim Pentecostal Church, complaining about this. He wrote back to me two lines, I'll look into this and get back to you, and he never did. The, the whole thing is a complete joke. And also at the table, I was told that Jesus made two atonements. He made a fleshly atonement on the cross. And then he went to hell and he made a spiritual atonement in hell as he's been tortured by demons. He made a spiritual atonement to the devil in hell, which is a teaching known as JDS or Jesus died spiritually. It's taught by TV preachers such as Kenneth Copeland, who would appear on um, God TV and other similar channels. The whole, the whole thing's a complete joke. Um, you, you said earlier that the Catholics have a billion people. Well, they don't. They've got millions of people who are not committed and don't have a clue what they believe. They're just no, well, paper I, I tigers. Agree, agree, absolutely agree with you with, with that. I mean, obviously, you know, we, we, our Daughters Bond Ministry suspended at the moment, but I've been doing it for years, and, and it's an extraordinarily rare thing to encounter somebody of a major Christian denomination who actually even knows what they're supposed to believe themselves. People, people don't care about the truth, the majority of people. No. It's all feelings and emotions, and the pastors yeah. want the money. That's all they want. You, Unfortunately so. You, you, you bully people. The main verse is Hebrews 10.25, forsake not the gathering of yourselves together. Yeah. And that's misinterpreted as attending our meetings, even though that's got nothing to do with attending meetings. And the um, it's just a business. It's just a money-making business. Um, so I gave up 10 years ago. Um, very, very sad. But um, I don't go anywhere now. I, I find, um, well, I, I could say an awful lot about these things, but um, I just find there's, there's no zeal, there's no commitment in these churches. I don't know what it is. It's as if, <laughs> it's rather like watching a Dracula film where Dracula sucks the blood out of people and they become sort of zombies that stumble. They walk very slowly like zombies. And it's as if all the zeal, all the enthusiasm has just been sucked out of these people. They've just got no zeal. They've got no passion. Um, yeah, very, 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 very sad. No, um, very sad. Uh, and that is unfortunately the case with the, the majority of mankind, I suppose, whichever, whichever part of the world you, you live in. Mm. Um, which is, you know, from our perspective, obviously we are part of a a worldwide international brotherhood who are extremely zealous, interested in the truth, interested in each other, interested in what God has to 
to say and what's taking place in the world at the present time. We believe we're living in truly extraordinary times. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Um, Could I just read one other quote, which is from a book, Prophecy, which I also have? Yes, of course. Prophecy. Is this, is this an older one of our books, you mean? Yes, it's, it's published in 1929. Um, oh, wow. I found on page 65 that they were teaching the second presence of Christ from 1874. That wasn't changed until 1930, officially changed until 1930. Oh. So as late as the 19, late 1920s and 1929, your book says the second presence of Christ is from 1874, which kind of shocked me because if Jesus did an inspection and the cleansing work between 1914 and 1919, and he then chose the Watchtower Society in 1919, how come that in 1919 the second presence of Christ was from 1874? And of course, Christ becoming king was from 18, 1878, which is in um, mm. Studies in the Scripture, Volume 4. Well, well hopefully, our understanding of uh, the Scriptures is continuing to get sharper and sharper. I think one important aspect of how we approach Bible study has always been that. We have believed that, as Proverbs 4.18 describes, the light gets brighter as God shines his uh, Holy Spirit on our understanding of his word, rather than, rather than establishing creeds and then refusing to budge from them, no matter what we else uh, comes to light. So our understanding of the scriptures, I mean, for you know, the, the material that you're describing, um, we would, as a modern-day organization of Jehovah's Witnesses, we would consider to be outdated. Mm. But you still criticize the Catholics for things that happened centuries ago, such as the Inquisition and the Crusades. Um, I, don't, I don't think that's an entirely unreasonable criticism. <laughs> but that happened a long time ago. Why not forget about it? Because the lights got brighter and brighter for the Catholics. You know, if, if if the light can get brighter and brighter for Jehovah's Witnesses, why can't the I mean, Catholics... You, you make a, that's, that wouldn't be a reasonable distinction, I don't think, Robert. I think if, if you're, you're describing two very different things. Doctrinal light getting mm. brighter is very different to living in a world in which it's acceptable to invade another country and murder anybody who won't convert to your religion, or anybody who doesn't accept a certain view of the Trinity can be burned at the stake. That, that's a very different um, situ type of the light getting brighter. Mm. Uh, that, that's a situation in which modern day society would no longer accept that kind of behaviour, thankfully. Well, remember in Proverbs 4.18, it's not light that gets brighter and brighter, it's the path of the righteous that is illuminated yeah. by the light that gets brighter and brighter. And the mm. contrast there is, is in the next verse, the, the wicked stumble they stumble in darkness. So it's a contrast between people who are obedient to God and people who are not obedient to God. Um, that book, Prophecy, it then says on page 167, um, if I could just read it, um, then came the British Empire as a mighty word power. And in this, the three elements, commercial, political and religious formed, the ruling factors and continue to rule. It too has become a tremendous commercial power and a great and cruel military power. And the religionists, form a part of the government. Surely it cannot be said that any one of these world powers is any part of God's organisation. Since there are but two great organisations, this empire must of necessity be of Satan's organisation. Exactly the same is true concerning America, where the three elements of Satan's organisation rule the people. So it says in this book that Britain and America are Satan's organisation and of course, when I read the Revelation, its grand climax at Handbook, which is on the JW.org site, mm -hmm. I've read every single page, but I've read quite a lot of it. On page 252, it, it mentions Britain and America as the seventh head of the satanic wild beast. It perhaps tones down the language a little bit, but the same language here is in prophecy, as you'll find in the Revelation well, book no, published no, in 1988. I, I, no, I would entirely agree with that. That is, that is absolutely still the... The view that we have in fact that was part of our bible study this morning wow so you would say that britain and america 
are Satan's organization? They're part of it. They are part of that same world um, under the control of Satan that Daniel 2.44 describes as needing to be crushed and put an end to by the kingdom of God. Um, would that include the crown? Do you think the crown is a part of this Satan's organization? I mean, it, it, it is part of the same political, in fact, as you, you described earlier, it is the headpiece of that uh, political organization. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd be um, rather unhappy about what you've said. I forgot your name, sorry. It's My, my name is Chris. Chris, thank you. Um, Chris, can I think about what you've said? I've been scribbling down some notes as you've been talking, and I'll copy down Daniel 2.44. Um, I'd be happy to speak again. I'm also looking yes, at, course, yeah. uh, perhaps on a different topic. I've been, I've been also looking at the resurrection because I believe that Christ rose um, bodily, you see, in the same body that he died in. Yes, I recall you, that was the first thing yes. you started. Yes, yes. On, 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 an, on another conversation then, yes. Thank you. Um, it is, I mean, I when I went to university, I did quite a lot of history on my degree. So perhaps you might think there's a bit much to go on about old stuff. But I, I think you can learn from history. Um, uh, I would completely agree. I think history is extremely important. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's very important to gloss as an organisation, it's important to me personally. I, I have a particular love of history. Um, so it, it, it isn't a question of dismissing things simply because they're older. Mm. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so if I could give you my mobile number as well, Robert, please, I'll tell you why. My, this um, landline that you call on is... Yeah. Unreliable. I'll, I'll I'll have to go soon anyway because I'm low on credit on the phone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, of course. So it, it's uh, zero seven. Two. If I could just mention Vindication Two, which is another book I've got. Um. It's book two of Vindication, and it says on page 54, it, it mentions Britain and America being a special division of Satan's organisation, the Mercantile Marine Division. And I'm kind of a bit, a bit shocked at that. Um, yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to look at that. I wonder, I might, I might, I've got a lot of older books here myself. I might have a look and see if I've got that one. It's, I don't, it's, don't think so. There's several vindications, and it's book two, page I don't think fifty-four. My goes back as far as yours. <laughs> um, well, I, I bought I them from a book, I bought them from a book raised, dealer. You, you've raised a really interesting um, area of discussion. Uh, I think the, this whole area of the of the governments and how we view the governments, I think, is very very important. So I'm, I'm really happy to talk oh. about it again. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Although only one topic at a time, because yeah, I don't know. I agree. maybe maybe the resurrection next page page fifty four. Because I will need about a month to to look at this. On page fifty four, it says the Bible attributes no commercial fleet to ancient Egypt. Tyre therefore seems to represent a special division or part of Satan's organization. Oh, I don't know. It talks about Tyre symbolically and then it says it finds yeah. its higher expression in the seventh world power there we are the seventh world power to wit the dual empire of britain and america this marine power once at least pretended to be friendly to god's people but in the latter times has become very unfriendly it then goes on and it says it seems to represent a special division or part of satan's organization and the context there would be um tire of which the modern representative modern expression of Tyre is Britain and America. And then on page 56, I think this is referring to King George and the US president. Um, king George was the King of England at the time. I don't know who the US president was. It could have been Hoover. Uh, the big men of the seventh world power who control the commerce of the seas are doubtless the proudest that have ever lived on earth. They are really rulers or princes of the seventh world power. And together with their allies at land, control the politics or politicians who are the more tangible rulers. These princes are really devil worshippers. 
because they worship and then it goes on. So it seems to be implying that the leaders of Britain and America, because it does talk about the seventh world power, that their princes are devil worshippers. And I'm thinking, well, I can't associate with that. Now, as you say, I think the language is probably um, toned and, and, uh, and different and there's the understanding of things a little. But the basic tenets of what you're describing, obviously, I think indication is a very old book. I think that goes yeah. back to the 1920s, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. 30s, yeah. 30s. Yeah. Um, the, the basic uh, scriptural understanding we have is that the seventh head of the wild beast is Britain uh, and America. Is, 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 is the dual world yeah, power. Is Britain, Britain and America. America. Yeah. And that that will in fact be the last one to hold sway over mankind in that dominating role before God's kingdom takes control. I'm going to... So, I'm going to have to go, Chris. I'll tell you why, because my credit's going to run out very, very shortly no, on this no, phone. No, and I need, to, I need to phone no, the electric company on, on, on Monday. So I must, must go. I'm sorry. No, lovely to talk to you, Robert. Thanks for your, thanks for your call. I look okay. forward to talking to you again. Thank okay, you. Bye Thank now. you, Chris. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.